What is going on, comic book gang? Year of the Collector here with great breaking news. Today is new comic book day once again. There's plenty to be excited for this week. We're getting issues for titles like Immortal Thor, Power Girl, Harley Quinn, and Amazon's Attack. With that being said, I want to tell you about the top four comics I'm looking forward to the most for February 28th. Jay Garrick, The Flash. Story by Jeremy Adams, pencils by Diego Olertegui, and colors by Luis Guerrero. In the last issue, we had the reveal that Jay Garrick's accident that turned him into The Flash was no accident, but rather a scheme from Dr. Hughes, aka Dr. Elemento. But the evil doctor had his doubts about what actually caused the change in Jay Garrick. Was it the hard water fumes, or did the fumes activate a metagene already inside Jay? Not sure of the answer, the doctor recreated the accident with a new subject, that being Judy. Judy is exposed to the hard water fumes as well. The results are in. She was now the Flash psychic known as the Boom. Two heroes for the price of one from the same evil genius. To sum it up, Dr. Elemento believes he can now activate the meta gene in everyone in the world. Amazing Spider-Man 44, written by Seth Wells, pencils by John Romita Jr., inks by Scott Hanna, Colors by Marco Menes and letters by Joe Caramagna. The conclusion to the gang war. The one criticism I've heard most readers say about this event is that this story isn't about Spider-Man. And I get it. But guess what? They are right. This is about Madame Mask. At the wedding of Beetle, Hammerhead was present also with this good looking brunette. This guy shotgun shot tombstone and all the mob bosses got evacuated out of the scene hammerhead put mask on a limo to get it out of there but it was a trap hammerhead killed mask then hammerhead started making moves against the other gangs and then he sat at the head table all proud of himself after claiming to be in charge of magia's territory he, all fool himself, gets carried away explaining his plans to this lady. And when she asked questions, he was like offended that she questioned his brilliance. So he got violent with the unassuming hot girl. Hammer made the mistake of turning his back to the lady who grabbed a metal pipe and got her pound of flesh back. I mean, this girl left a dent on Hammerhead's dome and she kept going viciously. This crazy broad turned out to be Madame Mask. She was hiding in plain sight all along. Now that all the gangs have been pinned against each other by Hammerhead, and most of them don't know she's still alive, Madame Mask could just sit and watch as the city burned. But she didn't stop there. With the help of Shotgun, who was working for Mask all along, she takes out Count Nefaria and Silvermane, to take control of the Magia. She hired Bellona to take out the Owl and claim his territory. And after Diamondback went down, she pulled up on his now defenseless business and turf to claim it for herself. Madame Mask collected the mob bosses who sat at the head table of the gangs of New York in her dungeon. Now, currently, she's duking it out with the remaining gang in Central Park. In the middle of the day, the heroes arrive at the scene to break this up, so who knows how this mayhem is going to end. Regardless of the outcome, you gotta give it up to Madame Mask. What a comeback. The Penguin, story by Tom King and art by Stevan Subic. From issue number one, we got teased basically the conclusion of a battle between Batman and the Penguin, which looked like no one won. That part is irrelevant for me. What matter is how we are going to get there. Well, so far, the Penguin convinced the help to come back from retirement. He found the members of the 4th of July, and some of them weren't sure about Oswald's job offer. So he offered them incentives and benefits to convince them to join his new enterprise. Oswald went on a trip to Las Vegas to see an old flame called Lisa St. Clair. They have a lovely dinner where they reminisce about the old days, but their relationship is complicated. 
Oswald seemed to convince Lisa as well. The next candidate was Black Spider from Gotham, who had personal grievances with Oswald's own children, Addison and Aiden. Side note, they might hate their father, but they are very much like him, especially Addison. On the last issue, we had a sort of origin story between Oswald and Batman. When Oswald was young, he worked as a bartender for Carmine Falcone, who abused him verbally and physically. But Oswald was smart. He became an informant for Batman, who took out Falcone out of the way so Oswald could rise in the criminal world. All of this story has been working to this scene right here. I think the journey has been amazing so far. Avengers Twilight, story by Chip Zdarsky and Ralph Macchio. Art by Daniela Cunha and Walt Simonson. And letters by Corey Petit. Colors by Gregory Wright. If you like stories about dystopian futures and old grumpy heroes, this is for you. I was hesitant about reading another Kingdom Come-like story, but once I flipped through the pages and saw the art, I instantly changed my mind. What can I say? I'm a sucker for Daniela Cunha's style. This story takes place in the future where our heroes are no longer around and the ones that are left are retired senior citizens who like going to public parks and feed the birds. Or they would like you to think so. There's an Avengers team that's sanctioned by the government that seemingly keeps everyone safe. But there's a cost for their safety. And the price is people's personal freedoms. The plot thickens when the media seems to revise all history specifically about who the Red Skull was. They claim that there's new information that seems to point he was a good guy after all. Of course, this doesn't sit too well with Steve Rogers. The face of this new agenda seems to be Iron Man, James Stark, the son of Janet and Tony. He even embarrassed Steve on national television. This world got turned upside down. On a single day, famously known as H-Day, the losses were immense to include the death of Spider-Man. Steve Rogers couldn't stand for this oppressive authoritarian government any longer, and when Luke Cage reveals there's a resistance in the works, he convinces Rogers to come out of retirement to be the hero they need, to be Captain America once again. That's going to be it for me this week. If you're reading any of these titles, please let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I'm Year the Collector. I want to thank you for watching. You have a blessed day and remember to read more comments.